Many of us struggle with trust in a variety of ways. For some people, the area has to do with emotional doubt, or maybe they have experienced hypocrisy, maybe in their church, or maybe in politics, or maybe with their own family. Um, you know, the number one reason why students are drifting away from Christianity right now is because of intellectual skepticism. And that was done, uh, that survey was done by a professor at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, Christian Smith. I grew up in a Christian family, and my parents loved God, they loved each other. My father was a minister, I had to go to church, I had to go to um, private school, but I felt a little bit sheltered. I had a relationship with Christ, I had the conviction of the Holy Spirit in my heart, but at times I was just kind of going through the emotions and, and just kind of going, you know, going to church because I had to, because my parents wanted me to. And my senior year of high school, my parents let me leave home. I was wrestling with my relationship with my parents, and I wanted to play basketball in college. I, I thought that if I got away from my little private school and went off to another school to play basketball with the greatest players in the country, that I would be prepared to play in college at the next level. So I left home, and I went off to this little boarding school in the mouth of Wilson called Oak Hill Academy, this place where guys like Carmela Anthony and Josh Smith and Jerry Stackhouse and others went to play ball. And I went there just to play ball, and it was intense. I was coached under the highest-ranked coach in the country, Steve Smith. And even though I went to this school just to play basketball, I realized, looking back, that God had other reasons for me to be there. It was a time in my life in which the foundations of my faith was going to be tested. It was a Baptist-affiliated uh, boarding school. And I remember one day the minister stood up and he said a prayer like this, Dear Lord, some of us call you Allah, and some of us call you Jesus. And he went down a list of other spiritual beliefs, uh, trying, to be in, trying to be tolerant of people of all faiths. And as a person, this pastor was really, uh, he was really being sincere. But I had known the verses, for example, in John 14, 6, where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I was familiar with um, what the early church believed about Christ, because I had grown up in church. I knew that the early church in Acts 4, 12 said that salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. But he was trying to be tolerant of people of other faiths. You see, every day I would eat lunch with four of my friends who were Muslims, and uh, we would have these spiritual conversations about the reliability of the Bible of, well, why do you say that Jesus Christ died on the cross? And, of course, Muslims say that Christ did not die on the cross, and we would have these discussions. And I didn't really know all the answers. I didn't really know what to say to the pastor, but I just started praying that God would use me. And so I went to that pastor, and I said, would you mind if I gave a sermon? And to my surprise, he said yes. And I had never given us a, a full sermon. So I went to some of my friends and went to this particular student. His name is Scott. And I asked him if I could practice giving this sermon. And, and uh, he could critique me. And we would pray for each other. And when I gave it to him, I asked his roommate to join us. And his roommate, when I was all done, said, that's, that's good. I, I need to trust Christ. And I thought, wow, you can pray to trust him right now. And so he did. I'm like, well, come back tomorrow and bring your friends. Well, the next day, uh, people started, uh, more people showed up to this dorm room. And we started like a weekly Bible study. And um, the next day, two people prayed to receive Christ. And I was challenged that year to love Christ with my mind. I think for a while, I loved him with my heart and with my emotions. And when things were going well, 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 I was doing well. But I think we need to also love Christ intellectually with our mind. Uh, and I think it provides a foundation in those moments where we just don't feel the presence of God. Because I, I don't always feel His presence. But His presence is still here and it's still there with you regardless of your feelings. And I think that's comforting to know and that we can increase in knowledge. In fact, Jesus in his human nature, he humbled himself. In Luke chapter 2, verse 52, it says that Jesus grew in wisdom 
and he also grew in his favor with God with man. And so Jesus, in his human nature, grew intellectually. And, you know, Peter, for example, he was not the intellectual that Paul was. Paul had been trained under Gamaliel. He had studied law and philosophy and theology. Peter was an ordinary fisherman. But yet, it was Peter who said, but in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. And, and I wrote Why I Trust Jesus to, to help encourage you as believers to, to give an answer, uh, to show why Christ is trustworthy, but also as believers when we struggle, when we have doubts, I believe that the historical evidence that is provided in this book will serve as a foundation of knowledge. Jesus said this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. In the last 10 years, I've seen trust shaken at just about every single level. I mean, I think we, we look at people that we respect, maybe even leaders in, within the church, both Protestants and Catholics. Uh, many of us have witnessed certain types of hypocrisies, and we have questions about who can we trust. And of course, there are celebrities that we really admired and respected who have been exposed because of greed, exposed because of numerous affairs or illegal drug use. There's been many governmental leaders who have been uh, distrusted because of their words and because of not being consistent. And many of us who grew up in church, we heard that phrase, well, just trust Jesus, almost as if it was a kind of a platitude or a cop-out to avoid what we were really going through. But I wrote this book that because Christ is God, he has the power to be trustworthy. He alone is perfect. Because as humans, we, we fail and we make mistakes. But we can also trust Christ because he is human. He's the only human who lived the perfect life. Um, even the enemies of Jesus praised his character. Pilate said, I find no fault in this man. And even though Jesus is perfect, many of us, we go through our struggles and doubts and fears. We find ourselves in a place that we never thought we would be. And then we wrestle with those same simple concepts of trust. So in this book, Why Trust Jesus, I provide historical and scientific and biblical and philosophical evidence of why the Christ of the New Testament is trustworthy. In the book, we deal with questions like, why should I trust Jesus when there's so many other spiritual paths? Why should I trust Jesus when there's so much evil and suffering in the world? Why should I trust Jesus when all I need to do is trust myself? You see, there's a lot of people who say, I don't need to study, I don't need to read God's Word, I don't need to trust Jesus because life is going fine without Him. They look around, they see people who aren't Christians, they look at people of other faiths and agnostics and atheists and say, they seem to be living a good life. Why do I need to trust Jesus? Well, I, I wrote Why Trust Jesus uh, because that person, I believe, needs Christ regardless of what they're feeling. Because of the very nature of who God is, that person might not realize it, but their own existence is dependent upon the one who put them into existence. And in this book, we will give arguments for God's existence. And we will show that God is not only the first cause of the universe, the intelligent designer, the moral lawgiver, but he took on flesh and blood through the very person of Christ so that we can know and trust him. And I don't have all the answers. I, I certainly don't. But I have studied and I have discovered some fantastic truths. And I hope that they will help you in your spiritual journey as you run after Christ as the one who is trustworthy.